Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the HETS Consortium, I would like to welcome you to the 2022 Best Practices Showcase, celebrating technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Inmari Santiago, and I will be introducing the speaker for this breakout session of the room. Before we begin, we request your support with the following. Please change your mobile phone to silent mode to have your full attention and avoid interruptions. This session is being recorded, and for those who join us virtually, please remain muted. This presentation will be in English. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. And finally, we invite you to see the QR code that the staff will have for to will share to all participants to complete the electronic evaluation form for this session before you leave this room. For the virtual participants, the link to the evaluation will be available on the chat. Please make sure to select the time and date for this session. Your feedback and recommendations are very important to HEADS. Now we're ready to, be, to start. The title of this presentation is Leveraging Canvas to Increase Hispanic Student Retention and Persistence. Our, please, walk, please welcome our speaker, Amanda Taylor from California State University, San Bernardino. The presenter will be virtual. Amanda, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to be with you today. Um, even though I'm not in Puerto Rico, I am grateful to be with you today. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, I am an instructional designer at California State University, San Bernardino. Um, a little bit more about me before I get started. Um, my background um, educationally is in English studies, English composition and literature. Um, I have a variety of in research interests, um, including things in higher education, as well as popular culture, um, all sorts of things. Um, so I like to, you know, to research a lot of things and I dabble in a lot of projects. Um, Today, I will be discussing my 2021 HETS Academy project, Leveraging Canvas to Increase Hispanic re Student Retention and Persistence. <clears throat> so in August of 2021, I participated in the HETS Academy um, virtually. One of the topics that really resonated with me as an instructional designer was design thinking. As I understand it and have tried to implement it, design thinking is primarily empathy based. It requires designers to go beyond just understanding the end user. Instead, it requires designers to put ourselves in the user's position, to consider their needs and clearly define the problem the learning product, experience, or resource is going to address. Empathizing with users also challenges designers to imagine the potential stumbling blocks or issues users may have. What may feel or seem intuitive to a designer may not be intuitive to a user, or if we're not putting ourselves in the user's position and trying um, or testing our products or resources, um, we may not see things, um, we, may, we may not see the problems that arise. Um, you know, the, the click that is easy for us to say, well, it's just right here, may not make sense to a user. Empathy also drives the ideation or the brainstorming or um, the talking through of a learning product experience or resource. Some of the questions in this process includes what is the problem or issue that we're trying to solve or address? What would most benefit users um, or end users in the creation of our product? What is the most effective solution? What tools are required? What tools do we have? How much might this creation process cost in both labor and time hours and worker hours, as well as actual funding? Ideation or this brainstorming process eventually leads to prototypes that become tested, um, which then leads back into potential redesign, reiteration, and then more prototypes. And this process may sound linear, but it's not. The phases of empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test are recursive and that can happen at any time in the process. Um, in fact, I found in my own experience in several projects, including this one at times, that it can be very easy to get caught in an empathize, define, and ideate cycle and struggle to actually get to a prototype to actually create something that might be useful. So my project, 
seeks to address student retention and persistence. And I will differentiate between these terms a little bit later in my discussion. My solution is to leverage Canvas, a learning management system, to curate information and contacts for a selection of student support services. I chose this solution for two primary reasons. First, research shows and the research that I found shows that access to student services can positively impact student retention. If students know that academic and non-academic support services exist and how to access them, they are more likely to use them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of my findings also suggest that localizing support services helps both students and support staff know what services are offered and what these different services do. Second, Canvas has a robust mobile app that is easy to use. Putting information in a widely available Canvas course puts the information at students' fingertips in a familiar environment. They do not have to search the entire CSUSB website, which is less mobile friendly, to find what they might need. Um, and speaking a little bit from my own student experience, um, I am currently an online student or where we use Canvas and I use the Canvas mobile app every day. Um, and so having that information handy um, is very useful to me. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. My project is currently in the late ideation, early prototype phase. So I don't have any data to share about how my project has impacted student re, um, retention at all. However, in my remaining time today, I would like to share my progress with you as well as how I hope to proceed and potentially get feedback on what I'm hoping to do. So a little bit about CSU San Bernardino. San Bernardino. CSUSB is part of the 23 campus California State University system that runs throughout the whole state. We are located near the southern border of San Bernardino County, near Riverside and Riverside County. This area is known as the Inland, Inland Empire of California. Most of our student population is from these two counties as shown in this graph here. We are primarily a commuter campus, although we do have some student housing. According to our demographic information from fall 2020, 86% of our student body is from San Bernardino and Riverside counties, 7% from other parts of California, 6% are international students, and less than 1% of our student body is from out of state. As such, our student population also represents the general demographics of San Bernardino and Riverside counties. This also positions CSUSB as a community anchor, as a place for resources for information and um, an impact um, on the local communities. For some additional geographical perspective, here is a partial map of California counties. Riverside and San Bernardino counties are the fourth and fifth most populous in California, respectively. San Bernardino County is the largest county by geographical area, and Riverside County is the fourth largest by geographical area. A little bit more about our demographics and our student body. As of fall 2020, 63% of our student body is identified as female and 37% as male. We can also see that 66% of our student body is identified as Hispanic. We are a Hispanic serving institution. So any initiatives we undertake and actually um, use and develop and disseminate to our students will impact Hispanic students. So my project. As previously stated, my project seeks to help increase student retention and persistence. Though Hispanic students were not the direct target or youth target audience, CSUSB's demographics ensure that when disseminated, my project will have an impact on this population. I should differentiate between retention and persistence here for my project. Um, generally, these terms are sometimes used interchangeably. However, for my project, I use retention to describe when students return to the same campus from term to term, um, particularly in their from first term to their second term, or if we want to look at it as far as academic years, especially from freshman year or first year to second year. I use persistence to describe when students return to post-secondary study from term to term, regardless of institution. So for example, if a student began um, their studies at CSUSB one semester or one year 
but they transferred to another institution and continued their, their studies, they have persisted. If they return to CSUSB the next term or the next academic year, they have been retained. So while I hope my project will help retain students at CSUSB, if it ultimately helps students continue their education anywhere, anywhere, I would call it a success. This last point is part of the why of my project. Um, having students continue their education um, at any, any institution, even if it's not here um, at CSUSB, um, is very dear to me. Um, I come from a family of educators. And I'm lucky to have that in my background. Um, and I've seen the importance and the impact that it makes on students' lives. Um, as mentioned previously, I also taught um, for 10 years at CSUSB um, prior to becoming an instructional designer. And I have plenty of my own experience as a student in several programs. I want to help students to continue their education. I want to help students want to continue their education. Um, in my experience as an instructor, and in my research, I found that if students drop out, they are less likely to continue their education. And if they do continue their education, it's usually much later in life. Dropping out feels like, and is often seen as a major life failure. Failure hurts and takes a long time to recover from. From an institutional standpoint, it is more cost-effective to retain students than to recruit them. While we do want to attract students to CSUSB, we want to keep the students who have already st started to make CSUSB their home. While I don't think that my project will be the ultimate solution to student retention, because there are so many things that go into it, I think it is a small step in the right direction. So instinctively, it, for me, it was like, well, of course, Canvas seems like a good solution. Putting all the students' resources in one place that students can access them seems you know, logical to me. Um, however, as a scholar and as a researcher, I also like to kind of have a foundational, a theoretical foundation or a theory-based foundation or a research-based foundation for my projects. So I'd like to take some time now to kind of go through some of the research that I've found while preparing um, for my project. Uh, four main themes, let me try that again. Four main themes came up in my research. Retention strategies, just the relationship between student services and retention. That having an integrated one-stop shop location for student services, whether that's physical or virtual. And then using the learning management system to help um, with retention. So under retention strategies, we have Siri et al. from 2021. And they claim that academic success, and I would add general student success, which again, um, as has been brought up in several panels today, uh, needs to be well-defined and we should have student voices in that definition. Um, academic success is considered a shared responsibility between students, faculty, and staff, where it used to be primarily the burden was on the student to make their way through their programs. Um, now it's becoming increasingly um, the case where it's now a joint effort or more obviously a joint effort. Um, this is apparent, especially true as student populations continue to diversify. Siri et al. also found that overall institutional commitment and student support greatly influence student retention. This first point is very telling. An institution needs to first commit to retaining students and then translate that commitment into actionable student support and available resources. As CSUSB is a state supported institution, the state government's commitment to a student retention and success also matters here. Funding for programs and personnel depends on state budget allocations, so there is not always money for initiatives. Additionally, there's often competition for funding, which requires prioritization that can sometimes feel or seem unequal or unfair. Siri et al. also remind us that the institution cannot control or influence everything that might affect student retention, such as personal issues, career path selection, or job loss, outside financial support beyond what the university or institution can provide or offer, or familial support, when I was teaching, I had several students um, over the course of my time who um, were at college without any family support. 
And that was very difficult for them because they felt very torn between um, family responsibilities and understanding that school was good and necessary for what they wanted to do. But without that support at home, um, it made school very difficult for them. So if institutions can't help with those things, they need to help with the things they can. And some of the things institutions can do is offer places to study, other available physical resources, um, such as um, finding you know, basic needs. So if, if students um, need temporary housing, maybe finding them a place to live, or if students need food or other basic necessities of life, institutions may be able to help with that as well. Um, institutions can also support diverse learners, help students develop study habits and other life skills, as well as help students develop comfort and competency with technology. In essence, Siri et al. rightly state that institutions should help directly where they can and offer support resources where they cannot. But simply having the resources is not enough if students do not know how to access them. Students need to know that those resources exist and then they need to have an easy way to find them and access them when they need it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Finally, some strategies that Siri et al. offer include um, having outreach, life and career planning, financial aid and technology support services. They also suggest having mandatory orientation programs for students. Um, at CSUSB, this could include an overview of Canvas in general, as we are transitioning to Canvas as our new LMS or learning management system, but also how to access student resources via Canvas once um, my project is complete. This information could be folded into existing CSUSB orientation programs where possible. So we don't have to totally reinvent the wheel and we can just say, here's some additional information and show them how to access that. So onto the relationship between student services and retention. Carr in London 2019 and Russo Gleischer 2013 examined the relationship between student services and retention. Carr in London specifically explored the effect of learning support services on student retention. They found that supplemental instruction combined with tutoring services were especially helpful in retaining students. They found a significant demographic difference in the students who accessed these resources and specifically identified Hispanic students as one of the primary user groups. This strongly suggests that offering student services and ensuring students know about and can access those services should be a priority. So while there may be um, target um, audiences for student support resources, they should be available for all and all students should know how to access them. We also see in Carr and London's study that it's important to kind of keep track of who is using what services and who is accessing those services. Russo Gleischer also highlights the need for student awareness of available resources, but particularly is um, emphasizes the need to remove the stigma for accessing resources. Students can often feel judged or less than for taking advantage of a university program specifically designed to help them. This can sometimes be the case if a specific campus building is associated with a specific service. So careful consideration of where to house services can matter especially if we want students to avail themselves of those resources. <laughs> Excuse me, one moment. Russo Gleischer also argues that faculty should be also made aware of these student services. Faculty are often a pri student's primary, if not only contact with the institution and they're well placed to make recommendations if needed or asked. Um, I was often asked um, about university resources when I was teaching. Um, I had a few students over the course of my time kind of call or email and say, how do I get help with this? And because I knew either people to refer them to or some of the programs on campus, I was able to at least direct them to somebody who might be able to help. It's like, I'm not sure exactly where to find it, but I know this person can help you find what you need. Um, however, we must be cautious to not shift the full burden of ensuring student awareness of resources to faculty. Faculty are also overworked and the larger the class size and the number of, the more, I can talk, the larger the class size 
and the more classes a faculty has, the more difficult it is to foster close relationships with students. Riso Gleischer focused on online students, but the conclusions drawn about the need for student support are applicable to all students. For me, the message is very clear here. Access to services impacts retention. Power et al. 2020 examined the creation of an integrated one-stop location for student services. Students only had to go to one building to access the specific services. On these service areas or this each service a resource had kind of a booth or a station in a single room or a building or a hall. I don't remember exactly what the setup was, but enough that um, staff at one section could overhear conversations and discussions about another resource. So there were conversations happening throughout the room and staff were learning about other resources, um, which led to informal cross training where one staff and one, one staff member and another could refer students to another resource because they had finally either found out that that resource exist, existed or they understood what that resource offered. This suggests that staff awareness of student services can also impact student success. The more we know of what our campus has to offer, the more we can then refer students to those services. And in turn, students can then start referring other students and telling their friends and people like, oh, hey, go here or call this person or email this place to get the help that you might need. Finally, by extrapolation, this integrated physical one-stop shop for services can apply to a virtual one-stop shop for resources. While students may not be able to directly connect with a person um, via online services, they can at least have contact information and a description of the resource that's available. In addition, at CSUSB for my project, instead of having to seek out a specific department or search the CSUSB website, um, the resources would be curated in Canvas and easily accessible. Okay. So finally, the use of the learning management system. Marino and Shi, 2019, examined the impact of LMS-based library instruction and library services for students. They found that using LMS-based instruction was more effective than one-time in-person instruction or even a series of in-person instructional sessions. This is due to the on-demand nature of LMS-based LMS information. Students can access resources they need when they need them as often as necessary. So if they find an email address at two o'clock in the morning, they can send an email while they're thinking about it instead of having to wait for campus to open. Um, Marino and she's findings further support my proposed use of Canvas for my project. <clears throat> so we've seen some of the what and the why. I've talked through some of the research that I found that for me has helped say, yes, Mandy, go ahead with this project. Um, do it. Um, and if you were in the panel or the presentation prior to mine with Dr. Arbello that said, okay, Mandy, you got to get this done. Um, let's go. So as seen in the research, awareness of and access to student support resources affects student retention. My project seeks to increase this retention and persistence. Um, ways to do this at CSUSB could take a whole project and discussion within itself. But three main things I see happening, and these all tie into my, my project. There needs to be a general awareness campaign of student services and resources. Um, this could be targeted to particular populations based on demographics um, if needed. It can also just be an introduction to these services. This can be folded back into orientation and more emphasis could be given to these resources. And then finally, when my, once this Canvas site is done and ready, um, then that can be part of those orientations as well. Um, possible ways to get the course um, to students is to link it in all Canvas courses um, in the navigation menu or to put it in the help resources. And I'll talk about some more possibilities in just a few moments. One moment. Excuse me. So why use Canvas? Um, as Marino and she talked about, LMS-based resources can be effective. Um, along with that, since CSUSB is transitioning to Canvas, 
now is the time to make the most of the LMS. Um, we didn't use Blackboard um, to curate student resources that I'm aware of, or um, excuse me, at least not formally. Faculty may have done that for them you know, on their own. Um, but here with Canvas, we have a chance to make the most of the learning management system because students will already be in it. It is logical to include that help um, in the platform. And again, <clears throat> wow, sorry. And again, having access via the Canvas mobile app will be useful. Um, as I said earlier, um, I am a student right now at another CSU um, campus. We use Canvas and I've done most a lot of my work through the app um, and I can check it for grades, I can check for messages um, and it's really easy to access the information that I need. Also for me to know that Canvas is a viable um, vehicle for what I want to do, it's always helpful for me to find examples of something that I want to create or something that will give me an idea that it will work. Um, so I can also see what I might include and <clears throat> I'm sorry. Sorry. So an example can serve as proof of concept. It can show what works, what might not, um, and it may give me more ideas of what can be included. Examples also suggest that a project can be replicated and modified. So I found an example from Barstow Community College. Barstow is a small town um, in the high desert of California. Um, it's a halfway point between the high desert and Victorville between that and Las Vegas. So Barstow Community College has a, what they call the BCC Resource Hub Canvas course or page. And this served as a model for my, um, the course that I want to create. So the BCC Resource Hub, as you can see in this picture, is fairly simple in design. Okay. It is linked in every Barstow Community College Canvas course. They linked it via the help links. So in a Canvas course, you would go to help and then that would pop up as BCC Resource Hub. Let's see if we can go visit it. Oops, wrong screen. Let's try this one. Can you see that BCC resource hub? Yes. Thank you. So if we go, let's take a, just a brief look at the BCC resource hub. And simple in design, all you need to do is click a tile. So if we go to counseling services, we come to a Canvas page that has information about the different aspects of counseling at Barstow. And once we're done going through this resource, we simply go back to home. So it's very simple by design so that students don't get lost kind of in the potential maze of Canvas places. And we can see here too that pages um, vary in their design and construction. So some have at least an introduction and contact information. And so the more I've looked at the Barstow or the BCC Resource Hub, um, the more I've kind of thought about the design of what I might want to do in my own project. <clears throat> okay, so we should be back to the PowerPoint. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. So with all of that in mind, I'd like to take just a few moments to talk about where my project is um, and what's happening with mine. And then I'd, be, I'd love for some feedback, some help with directions or any, I'd be happy to also answer any questions. So my project is still in the late ideation, early prototype phase, which means I'm still brainstorming all of the things that need to in, be included. Um, I'm gathering input about which resources to use. Um, I am informally surveying the students um, that I know and that are <clears throat> available to me in my workplace. I'm also consulting with some of my colleagues to see what might be most useful. Um, I plan to follow Barstow's general design in keeping things very simple. So to choose a tile or choose a button, all the graphics are still in development. Um, 
go to the Canvas page about that resource, and then go back to the home page. Just very simple. Um, I want to make sure that I keep all of the information within the Canvas iframe or within the page so students aren't re uh, required to go to external websites. Because the more often you go out of, a, of Canvas, especially on a mobile device, the harder it is to get back to where you want to be. So my next steps include finishing the first prototype and gathering initial feedback from students, um, my colleagues, other staff, and faculty. Um, I anticipate at least one to two more iterations before deployment. Um, I also need to discuss the deployment options. Because this is a course, there are some options to ensuring students have access to the information. I could just automatically enroll students in the course so it's on their dashboard on Canvas. Um, it can be connected to the Canvas Blueprint course that we use to create each term's Canvas shells. So it could be a link um, on the course navigation menu. It can also be linked in the Canvas help links or a combination of any of these. There may be other things that I should consider um, as um, I think about what I want to do. So what I'd like to do just very briefly is share the current prototype that I have. It's not fleshed out at all, but I want to show you where I am. And we'll look at it in student view and how simple that I want to keep it. So we have home, and then you choose a tile. And right now, so if we go to the library, in this current prototype, we have library contact information. And then I have directly linked to or embedded the CSUSB library website into the Canvas page. And so students could, in theory, start doing some of their work inside the Canvas page um, with this resource. And they could do work in the library. We could go back to home and choose another tile. And the design is still in flux and in process. So um, but that is where I am with the um, ideation and the prototyping of it. So ultimately, with this, my aim is to help our students stay and succeed at CSUSB. Um, I think the project has potential. Um, it does need time for further development, as you've seen. Um, but I look forward to making it, completing it, and seeing first how it's received, and then seeing what it might do for our students. And that is the end of my prepared remarks. Um, thank you for your time and attention. I'd be happy to take feedback, take questions, talk this through some more. Thank okay, you. Amanda, you have a message on the chat uh, by Holly Sumner. It says, as an alternative to creating an, a standalone course, we have experimented with using Canvas to share student resources in getting started modules. If your institution enables account level templates, then that module can be copied to every new course that is created. Yes, that's something, thank you, Holly, something we're considering as well. Um, part of the potential issues I see at our campus is um, faculty not wanting to keep that information in the course. Um, and being can potentially confused by why is this information here? But yes, that, that's absolutely something to consider. Um, thank you for that. Okay, any questions, comments? You can either type them out on the chat and I'll read them out loud, or you can just uh, unmute your mic and make your observation, your question, your opinions, anything that might help uh, Amanda. Hi, Mandy. I have a question. Sure. Um, are this uh, this project when it's developed? Are you hoping to make it available only to enroll CSUSB students, or to uh, potentially make it um, like a public for potential students uh, that want to attend Cal State San Bernardino? I would love to do both. Um, Barstow is Barstow's is both. It's both public and available to enrolled students. Um, that's something I would need to talk to our LMS administrator to see how we can do that, if we can do that. So short answer, yes. I hope to make it public as well. 
Another quick question is with regards, since this is going to be a resource page for students um, all across the university, um, have you considered doing collaborations with all the departments so that they can yes, provide yes. information that they want to put or perhaps that they consider important for students to see? Yes, I have thought of that as well. Um, the potential drawback, I, I love collaboration. The potential drawback is how long it might then take to create the site um, and how many people um, want input. And not that input is a bad thing by any means, but as we've seen, or at least I've experienced, the more hands you have in a project, the longer it takes to get things done. And rarely is everybody happy with the final product. So that's partly why this current iteration has um, direct links um, as opposed to typed or um, based, I can talk, I promise, as opposed yeah. to text um, or tabs or things like that. Because if we link to the website information, then that always stays current and we don't have to worry about always going into update a page. Wonderful, thank you. Sure, thank you. Any other questions uh, for our virtual viewers? If not, I'm gonna be leaving on the chat the evaluation uh, link. Please uh, fill that out before you leave. All of your comments are uh, very much important to us. It can help us improve our services and our presentations, even though this one was spectacular over here. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, so I am sending two links. The first one is for the current session, which it was by Amanda over here. But I will also be sending one, uh, which is to evaluate the set all the sessions that you visited today. Let's see all day. If there are no further questions, I will stop recording this session. Thank you so much, Amanda. Best of luck with this project. It has a lot of potential. And as a student, I would really want that type of service in my university because finding things on their page is kind of chaotic when you're a freshman. Yeah. So this will be of great use either Thank for you. a freshman, a call, uh, high school senior, or just anyone that wants to find out more about the university. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Bye, Mandy.